everyone today I'll be doing my first outdoor cooking video and I will be cooking Jamaican chicken foot or chicken feed soup which I will be using pumpkin today is a Saturday and most Jamaicans would cook soup well I will be cooking some pumpkin chicken foot soup and I am sure that my family will enjoy I'll be using some charcoal I won't be using any wood today this is a real this is a typical Jamaican outdoor cooking guys so please don't look for anything fancy in the background I am outside and I will be showing you first how I catch my coal fire so it needs some more fire coal to begin with some more fire coal I'm not using a gloves I don't mind my fingers or my hands getting it's not the first time I'm cooking outdoors so I, re I know how to catch a coal fire and all those things so I have a piece of napkin here saturated in some oil and that is what I will be use, using to catch the fire I hope it's a windy day but I hope I'll get the chance to to strike the match and get this fire going guys let me start before the wind starts to blow again. Let me try and strike the match so I can get this fire going. First attempt failed. <laughs> Let's try the second attempt. And this one looks to be successful. See, there's fire. Hope it works. For those who don't know how to catch a coal fire, you can look and you will learn something today. Now I have some friends on YouTube who is always encouraging me and asking me, when are you going to go live and cook or when are you going to start cooking outdoor? Well, I'm not able to go live as yet because my channel is fairly new. My cooking channel is fairly new, but I can always do a video. So. That is it. You can come closer so that everyone see what's happening here. I have the assistance of my daughter here today who is a videographer and she's no professional so please bear with her. <laughs> see? My fire is about to catch. So I'm gonna show you in the meantime while the fire is catching. Here's my pot right here with the water in it. You can show them. I won't be cooking this pot full of water, of soup. But this is the pot and I have my utensils here such as my, my knives and my, my spoons and everything here needed. Over here now, I have the chicken feet that's not yet cleaned. I'm going to clean them as soon as I get the, the pot on the fire and wait on the water to boil. I have breadfruit here, carrot, Irish potato. <laughs> Prince is chasing a cow over there. Um, turnips, pumpkin, I have some white yam which is called the renta yam and I have a piece of yellow yam. I have some flour there for dumplings, scaly and thyme, scotch bonnet pepper and some cock soup. I have my pimento berry, my garlic for spice and my blended, my blended mixed spice and um, <coughs> some pink salt over here and uh, that's about it uh, I will get to preparing these uh, first I'll need to wash my hands guys look I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty I will be preparing these these veggies and these goodies right now um, so I can get going so I can get going so let me take these out in the meantime. My chopper, my knife, my soup ladle, my tasting spoon, and so I will get I will get cracking with the peeling of the veggies. When I'm finished, I will wash them. Yeah, I'm I'm not afraid to use knives, guys. This is a side of Joyful Julie that uh, you will get to find out. 
For those who knows me on my other channel, Joyful Julie 1974, you have never seen me cooking like this before. But on this channel, it's me, Joyful Cooking, Joyful Julie Cooking. You're getting to see this side of me. So I just peeled a turnip. I'm peeling so, uh, I, an Irish potato right now. And guys, I move very swiftly, you know. Whoa, show, show them the fire. The fire is catching, guys. The fire is well caught now. The fire is catch now, guys. So I'm gonna get it ready to put on the pot. And that's it. And DW eats Miss Donna, Donna Watson. This is my rim that I use for outdoor cooking. You said you're gonna show your rim when you're gonna cook outside in your backyard. So this is mine. I'm showing you mine. Miss Donna from DW eats. This is my rim. <laughs> and I'm gonna get the pot on the fire now, guys. And that is it. So I'm gonna get back to my peeling of veggies now. That is it, guys. That is it. Um, from this side. This might take some time preparing all these veggies, but uh, I'm not in a hurry. I'm in a comfortable space in my 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 country backyard in Jamaica. Yes, I am in Jamaica. I love the smell of the charcoal. Love, love, love the smell of it. See? Pretty Irish potato. Um, this is a very large carrot. I won't need more than one. One carrot will do, guys. And you know, they say that we shouldn't peel carrots. We should just probably scrape them off and wash them. No, we shouldn't peel the carrots, but it's a habit. It's a habit of me. It's very habitual to peel my carrot. Um, my mother never used to peel carrots. She would just scrape them like this. And sometimes this one is big, so I can scrape it. Yeah. Or <clears throat> you can use a, a, a scoring pad, pad, pad to, to, you know, kind of wash them off too if you're at the sink. So this is a this is also a technique that can be used for cleaning the carrots. See, nice and clean. Look at the pumpkin, guys. It's very pretty. The soup is gonna be so nice because I have all the right ingredients. See, when I'm cooking soup, when you're cooking soup, if the pumpkin doesn't look like this, it's not ready. The soup won't be rich. See, the soup won't be rich. Now some people don't peel their pumpkin when they're cooking soup, but I peel mine. When I'm boiling the pumpkin just like that to eat, I would just cut it up, cut out the belly, leave it like this, wash it off and boil it. But for the soup, I will peel it. Yes, they say the, the, the nourishment is in the skin. Everything that you would get from a green veggie you would get it from the, the pumpkin skin as well. So, pumpkin soup is very nutritious and rich, guys. I'll just leave it like that. I'm gonna show you how I, how I do the breadfruit. Breadfruit is kind of scarce now, guys. So I had this two cut piece. I don't have a whole breadfruit. But it will work. It will work. As I said before, guys, I move very swiftly. Cut out the belly of the breadfruit, and uh, this is how I peel my breadfruit. This is how I cut and peel my breadfruit. You hear the wind, guys? Oh my word! Show them the trees or the leaves blowing. See, see, it's a very windy day. Now this piece is not so good. This piece is battered, so I won't be able to use that part. No. I'm just showing you a sample of how I, how I peel and prepare each item that I'm going to use. I already peeled a turnip, Irish potato, and this is how the, the breadfruit looks that I'm going to put in the soup. I'm going to cut them up further as soon as I finish peeling them and washing them. So that's the breadfruit, but the yams now, you cannot peel the yam and put it down because they'll become 
they'll, they'll become tarnished the color won't be nice so this is the yellow yam i'm gonna wait until i'm ready to put it in the pot before i peel it and cut it up also guys the rent i am this is real jamaican rent i am joseph brown yes man i know you're a soup guy you know i have to show to you when i'm cooking soup joseph remember you're the soup lover <laughs> yes so joseph you're gonna enjoy the soup now these these won't be going in the pot for now guys these will kind of be the last things to go in the pot so I'm just gonna cut for now and when I come back you'll see how the vegetables are prepared to go in the pot so the pot has come to a boil with some pimento berries and some garlic cloves you can see them floating around I cleaned the chicken foot and I decided at last minute to you know add some some chicken back make it a truly authentic Jamaican soup who know about chicken back soup and chicken foot soup can tell you how delicious it is so I have the chicken back which is mostly bones that I like and the chicken feet so I'm gonna add them to the pot that has the pimento berries and the garlic I cut off the toenails and I wash them in vinegar and it's now ready for the pot. After I have added the meat in the pot, I'm going to cover it to continue boil and then I'm going to prepare the veggies, wash them, peel the yams and stuff like that and then this will be boiling for a while and then I will add those. and. You know, rinse off this spoon. This is my soup spoon. See how long it is, guys? I can't use, I can't function with the, the short spoon in the pot, in the soup pot. So, yes, so I will know. Um, I'm gonna add some of my all purpose seasoning that I mixed to the pot, uh, and uh, I'm gonna add a cock soup. Uh, to boil the meat in to get the flavors i'm gonna be adding more than one cock soup but i'm gonna add one now and this is the cock soup that i use grace cock soup some people call it chicken noodle and this will flavor the soup so much so i'm gonna i'm gonna use one to to boil the meat so it starts getting the flavor that I am looking for now I can show you what my mixture of spices look like but I'm not gonna tell you <laughs> yes so I'll boil the meat and I'm gonna add some pink salt as well pink Himalayan salt not too much because the cock soup has salt and my blended spice has salt as well so This is not a recipe that I'm showing you, so that's why I'm not using any measurements. I'm just free-handedly adding the ingredients. So I told you the, the, the stages of it already that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cover this to boil. Boil a little while I prepare the veggies and the yam. So. This is what I did. This is what I did. I cut up the pumpkin, the carrot, the Irish, the turnip, and the breadfruit. So this is a mixture of it. I'm just gonna wash them off. Yeah, add water to them. So. I let them sit in the water for a while while I'll peel the yam. My knife, please. Let me put the knife, Haley. I need the knife. See, I have more cock soup. I have another one. Stand by. But if needs be, I will also get another one outside the, out the house. And add it. Add it at a later time. Yeah, so I'm now going to peel the yellow yam.
See how beautiful it is. And here I am in Jamaica. I paid I paid two hundred and fifty dollars for a pound of yellow yam. In the Christmas season, it was like three hundred and fifty dollars and four hundred dollars per pound, but the price has gone down a little bit. I'm not using a lot of yellow yam because I have the renta yam too, the white yam, and I want the soup to have body, but you know, not too thick, not too thick at all. So. I have to leave space for the for soup instead of too much crown provisions. I don't know how many of you like a lot of food in your soup, but uh, we like to have enough soup as well as food. Sometimes I'll do pea soup as well, red pea soup, but today I'm not in the mood for red pea soup. I just want the pumpkin soup. So, some people don't wash yam because it, it, it has a, an effect that will scratch your hand. And it does scratch my hand too. So I just use the paper to clean it. The paper towel to clean it. Pass me that basin please. This one has water. All right. I'm gonna use that water. I'm gonna. I don't want to put the yab in any water. I'm just gonna cut it up in cubes. But this is the bite sizes that I'll be cutting the yams in. So you can use a spoon to take it up, you know. This is what I call bite sizes. Not too big, but not too small either. Guys, if you don't know how to use a knife like this, please use your cutting board. Utilize your cutting board. I also have a cutting board out here, but with my expertise, <laughs> I can I can free-handedly cut it. So that's the yellow yam. I'll be now peeling the renta. Now, if you if you're not careful with the renta yam, it will mash, and it too will add body to the soup. So, if you don't want your renta yam to be mashed out, you can watch it when you're boiling it and you can take it out the pot and set it aside if you want. Or if you don't mind it just uh, falling to pieces in the soup, you can just let it, let it be. It's too big for me to handle like that, so I'm gonna cut it. Cut it smaller. And then I finish the peeling process. And I won't be cutting this too small because as I say, you have to treat it like Irish potato, guys. It will just fall to pieces. Yeah, you have to, you have to treat it gentle. I'm not going to wash the yams, they are very clean, I'm not going to wash them. And this soup that I'm cooking guys is for my family. I won't be entertaining anyone and I won't be selling any food. So please don't come at me if you see something that you do differently, okay? This is strictly for my family. My hands are clean, I'm not using our gloves. Alright, I will clean up, don't worry about this, I will clean up these and throw them over in the, across the fence in the common so that the cows over there can indulge. Or I can just throw them right over there in my little garden where I have my fever grass, my leaf of life, my spinach, my mint tree, my mango tree and all those little things, okay? It can be used as mulch. So, let me see what's going on in the pot. If, it, if it's boiling, yeah man, it's boiling. I don't need any more fire right now. So guys, this is a one pot meal. And 
it's soup. I'm just gonna add the ground provisions right now to it to the pot so that they can boil together. Yeah, so these I will add. I want the pumpkin to to be mashed so it can give the soup the color and the the body. I didn't do any, everything on my own. I have the help of my daughters, you know, to make it easier for me. I'm not superwoman. <laughs> I do need some assistance. All right, so I'm just gonna cover the pot and allow it to boil for say half an hour and then I will add the yams, the scallion, the thyme and all those things. Right guys? If it needs more, if it needs more charcoal, it's a piece of yam. If it needs more charcoal, I'll just lift off the pot and add it. All right. So when I come back, you will see the yams and the scallions and the thyme and the scotch bonnet pepper and the other chicken noodle going in the pot. So guys, as you see, everything else is already in the pot except for the dumplings. I will just knead my little flour with a little pink salt. Not too much flour since I don't want a lot of dumplings. So just a little salt right there. I'll just mix it around a little and I will add my water accordingly. Not too much at a time because I don't want my flour to be spoiled my dumpling mixture so I'll just add the water little by little and uh, don't laugh at the way that I need my flour everyone needs flour differently right one thing I know flour is very easy to knead to make into a dough so in a minute or a little over a minute my dough should be ready just a little bit more water And if you were timing me, you would see that uh, my dumpling mixture, my dough, is ready in a minute or a little over a minute. I'm so sorry guys, this section of the video has to be a voice over because uh, my neighbor started partying and the music were copyright music and they were very loud. So I just have to figure out a way how to beat the system so that I could upload my video. So please bear with my voice over. See, the flower dough is ready. Yes, it's ready. I'm just giving it a few more punches. And that's it. Voila. I'm just going to set it aside a little for it to soak. And then I will go check on the pot. At this stage with everything all the ground provisions and the veggies in the pot I have to constantly stir it uh, so that they don't start sticking to the bottom of the pots and I will it needs a little bit more water because I want to have soup just as I want to have enough you know, food in it we like to drink the soup the broth see how beautiful it is see how rich the pumpkin color is that's what I was looking for. If you're cooking pumpkin soup and it doesn't have that color, guys, that means your pumpkin is not a rich pumpkin and the soup won't be that flavorful. Because pumpkin is not only for color, it does add body and flavor as well. So far, nothing is sticking in the bottom. It feels alright to me. So I'm just gonna wash my natural seasonings, my thyme scallion and scotch bonnet peppers now i like to use the green thyme 
more than the dry time I'll add a ripe pepper and a green pepper you know after a while I will be bursting the yellow pepper to add a little heat and flavor and uh, the green one will just be for flavor so to make soup nice and delicious we need to add fresh green scallions and the green thyme so I just crush the scallion a little so that the flavors of it can be infused in my soup guys can you believe the aroma is now kicking with the natural seasonings that I added wow I'm sure my soup is going to be so delicious look at that so at this moment I will be adding in the other pack of grace cock soup I don't know what type of chicken noodles you like to use but I enjoy using grace cock soup because it gives color and it also has a flavor that I prefer over the other ones wow the flavors were just ah, taking me over guys so <laughs> yes I'm sure I'm gonna enjoy the soup the dumplings will be going in next I will show you how I make my dumplings for my soup just another stir to ensure nothing is sticking then I will start making the dumplings see that see that beautiful the pimento berries are still floating around at one point I will be taking them out so don't worry about those that's my flour ready for the dumplings yes man white flour dumplings no cornmeal added so I like to make my dumplings small I like to call them marble dumplings if you don't want to cut them you don't have to they are just bite sizes that can fit in your mouth see I will be making some marble dumplings and I also will be making some spinners or what I call roly-poly it's not a lot of flour but because I'm making the dumplings small it's gonna take a little time to make them my family don't eat a lot of flour so I certainly will not put a lot of dumplings and we can't eat all this soup in one day so whatever will be left we will have it the following day so in with the marble dumplings some roly poly is coming up very soon I also move my hand very fast when I'm kneading when I'm making dumplings it's important to stir while you're making the dumplings so that they don't stick to each other or they don't stick to the bottom of the pot so to make it a little easier I kind of cut them into the sizes that I want ahead of time and that's the roly-poly <laughs> Yes, you don't only put roly polies or spinners in manish water. It can go in just about any soup. And guys, you can look out for more cooking outside. I will be one of these days. One of these days, I will be doing some manish water. And <coughs> excuse me, one of the days I will be doing some red pea soup as well. And I like to use the coal more than the wood because the pot is most much easier. To be washed notice how clean the pot remains but when i'm gonna cook like my curry goat and so i like the flavor of the wood so i will be using some logwood when i'm ready to do all those cookings as you know my channel is based um mostly on outdoor cooking and i will showcase a lot of curry dishes as well so don't worry guys the curry dish is coming up and the rotis and the doll and all those things just please give the video a like leave some comments and subscribe if you like my videos and i will keep posting i will be going live sometimes when i'm cooking outside 
So just keep connected and you will see all those good things that I have in store. Just a few more dumplings to go and then the pot, the soup will be landing maybe in another 10 to 15 minutes the most. These dumplings, they don't take long to cook at all. So, some prefer roly-poly, some prefer the marble dumplings. See how good the soup looks? Ah, uh, I wish you guys could smell it. I wish you could smell it. Big up to all Jamaicans who know about, uh, who knows about chicken foot and chicken back soup and the outdoor cooking. Big up to all Caribbean people who enjoys cooking outdoor and even some foreigners. Some foreigners like my friend DW Eats, Miss Donna Watson. She has her rim that she says she can't wait for the time to get warm in London. So that she can start cooking outside as well. So Miss Donna, this is my um my rim that I use to cook outside. Look how beautiful the soup looks. The dumpling has been boiling for around five to seven minutes. So it's time now I can taste the soup because I haven't tasted the soup as yet, you know. That's my my tasting bowl and my tasting spoon. Just a little soup and a chicken foot to see if I need to add a little more salt and to know how soft the chicken foot really is. I do enjoy eating the scallions as well and it's also healthy to eat. Don't want to burn my mouth so I have to give it a little blow. Mmm, yes. soup is giving guys the soup is delicious wow just like i wanted it to taste just like i wanted it to taste but i'll i'll allow my daughter to taste it and get her opinion as well because i won't be the only one eating the soup some say eating some say drinking but from what i've learned table manners or etiquette they say soup is eating not drinking so let's hear what Haley has to say. The chicken foot is so soft. You can see from the way it cuts with the wood spoon. And the Haley says that she thinks it needs a little more salt. But if you're hypertensive, guys, if you have hypertension, I wouldn't advise you to add any extra salt because the cock soups, they do have salt. And if you're going to use some all-purpose seasonings or stuff like that, they also have salt in it. So be careful with your salt intake. It's so soft and yummy. I'm a chicken foot lover. You will hear me keep repeating myself of my love for chicken foot. Yes, and that's Prince. That's Prince in my dog. Lily, here's Prince. Prince doesn't leave me far, Lily. You know that. <laughs> uh, I'm just adding a little bit more of my blended seasonings. My all purpose. <coughs> Excuse me. And I will be adding a little bit more pink salt. And that's it, guys. I don't have any reason to taste this soup again. I know it's perfection. I'll just give it another stir. And a few more minutes and... Uh, soup will be ready to eat i have my bowl waiting and my daughters are also waiting in line to serve themselves i won't be serving them everyone will get to help themselves and take what they want that's how i do it 
when I'm cooking for my family, that's how we do it. Guys, at this time I'm just bursting the scotch bonnet pepper to infuse the flavor some more and add a little a little heat, a little spice. So soup is ready in like five minutes. At this time I'm just gonna like clean up my area. Finish cleaning up so that I can enjoy my soup. Before you know it, in no time it will be night. And I don't want to be outside when it gets dark. So I'll be taking the pot inside. I just want to eat outside. And that's my bowl. That's my bowl, guys. I'm just trying to find a piece of rentayam. That is it. I'll go in for a marble dumpling. Try to find a roly-poly. There you are, roly-poly. And then whatever comes up on the spoon is good for me. Maybe a piece of yellow yam. Carrots, potato, turnips. And then the chicken foot. That's me. And chicken foot is in abundance, so I'll just take some more. And some soup now. I surely will enjoy this soup. I hope that you will enjoy watching the video as much as I will enjoy eating my soup. That's Prince over there. He's not going anywhere. He's my little watchdog. That is it, guys. I'll just pick out those couple pimento berries, get them out the way, and look at the beauty. That's the finished product of my Jamaican chicken foot soup that I cooked outside. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. My belly is full. See how pleased I look?